We're getting a little wind and some intermittent showers, but I wanted to give you a quick look at the new FabArm L4S. This is the most economical model called the Initial Hunter. This example has a 26 inch barrel. Unlike the uh, catalog copy, it doesn't have a, uh, a, a, a plastic bead, a plastic tube bead on front. It has a, uh, a gold metal bead, which I prefer. No annoying center bead. The entire gun is beautifully done. It weighs, uh, on my scale, six and three quarter pounds. So this is really ideal for chasing pheasants. Nice gun. The only negative I've been able to find with the gun at all is the recoil pad, if you want to call it that. It's just a piece of hard rubber. It's only 12 millimeters thick. So I think most people uh, that, that want to shoot a lot of clays with peppier loads are going to go with a thicker pad. Fab Arm offers a 22 millimeter pad, a silly 10 millimeters thicker that I'm going to try next. Um, other than that, it shoulders beautifully. The balance is just superb. This handles like a British game gun. I mean, there's nothing front heavy about it at all. If anything, it's uh, it's neutral to even being a little bit uh, uh, muzzle light, which is ideal for a field gun, as far as I'm concerned. So it shoulders instantaneously; it comes right up. You don't you can close your eyes and up it goes. It does come with shims. There's nothing to worry about as far as the buttstock because the entire gas mechanism is all here beneath the forearm. I'm going to take a few shots with some one ounce loads since the, the rain's let up and then we'll move it along if we have time we'll check point of impact etc etc. We're going to start out with some federal target loads. These are 1180 foot per second one ounce loads and that's about as light as I would ever use for clays or for dub. Obviously I'd step up the load intensity a little bit for pheasants. So we'll see if it breaks clays, we'll check the ejection, and then we'll step it up a little bit. Not much to it, one ounce lows, there's not much going on. I'll throw some holes at the camera so you can get an idea of what type of ejection you can expect. It's positive ejection. I haven't had any failure to feed or any problems with it uh, so far, but you should be able to see the holes come out. So there you go. About five, five to six foot ejection looks like about five feet. Five to six feet. So that's absolutely positive ejection with one ounce loads. Some people want to shoot 28 gauge payloads for whatever reason, I don't. But if you want to shoot three quarter ounce loads, uh, blooper loads or seven eighths ounce loads, slow seven eighths ounce loads, people have been doing that. And to do that's pretty easy actually. You just interchange the piston. You can screw in the uh, gas piston. You can just use the gas piston from the XLR5 velocity and there you go. That eliminates the pulse piston braking action and you can shoot your 7 8 loads uh, all day, all night uh, if you want. But as a field gun I have no use for that of course. One ounce is as last minute go. Next step up in load intensity would be these BMP F2 Legends. They're an ounce and an eighth, about 1230 uh, foot per second. So excellent target load, excellent trap load, and excellent dove load. So it's a big step up as far as performance, basically because you're using harder shots, a higher quality level of shot than your generic target loads. They're also pretty blue. So we'll see if that breaks the place.
not much of a problem. We'll show you what the ejection looks like. Hopefully we'll, this will be flinging right at the camera. Ejection is more like eight feet. We've got uh, yeah, approximately seven to eight foot ejection. So obviously the ejection distance does increase in concert with the load intensity. Still not a bad load, but uh, you're going to need more of a recoil pad if you want to shoot those all day long. Next step up the load intensity chain is uh, a load similar to what you'd use for pheasants. These are ounce and three eighths Winchester Super Pheasants. Not my favorite load. Normally I go with a buffered ounce and a quarter load, number fives, always number fives. Anyway, ounce and three eighths and 1300 foot per second. So these are pretty snappy loads. It's something that you'd you'd really never use for breaking clay pigeons, but uh, that's what we're going to do right now anyway. Should break a clay pigeon. Well, it hammers the clays, and if you shot these all day long, it would hammer your shoulder too. But uh, obviously, when you're pheasant hunting, you've got much heavier gear on. Generally, I do cold weather clothes, uh, a wool shirt, etc., etc. And uh, the limit here in Illinois is two roosters a day, so it's hardly high volume shooting. As long as we're at it, we'll check the ejection distance with these ounce and three eighths, 1300 foot per second Winchester Super Pheasant number fives. And that would be more like, oh, 10 feet. So it slings them right out there. So obviously the bolt speed does go up uh, commensurately with higher payloads, higher velocities. So uh, there we are. We'll break a few more clays only because it's fun back to the one ounce loads. And after that, it's time to check the point of impact because Roughly 50% of the guns that I test, shotguns that I test, don't shoot anywhere near um, point of aim. So we'll bag it up, we'll set up a target, and see how the fab arm does. But obviously it appears to be pretty close. much to it. Great handling gun, light gun. You're crossing uh, uh, a creek or some, some wet snowy stuff. Real easy to unload the gun and carry it with one hand or crossing the fence, unload it and just hand it to your buddy on the other side. So great field gun and a great looking gun too. So uh, let's bag it up and uh, kill some paper. All right, we have a 12 by 18 silhouette target set up at 35 yards. We're not guessing. We used a Leopold uh, electronic rangefinder, which is one of the best on the market. So we'll zoom in a little bit. We're going to take uh, three shots. You should see some paper flying. So three three shots from the bag. And then we'll repeat three shots offhand. So a properly fitted gun, whether you're, you're over the bag, going straight down the pipe, or standing up, the point of impact should be virtually identical. It's hard to kill paper completely past dead, but uh, 
I think we've done it. So let's go take a little closer look. You see there's no noticeable left-right uh, dispersion to worry about. We do have a little breeze out here. Uh, point of impact versus point of aim, about two inches high. That's just eyeballing it, so I would say right about here. We'd actually have to go back and count pellets uh, to be sure, but that's exactly uh, what I would be looking for, either the 55, 45, or 60, 40 type uh, pattern percentage dispersion, which you know, the difference is only uh, an inch and a half or so at 35 yards. So uh, it does a fine job. That's certainly dead paper. We're going to repeat the same thing, only offhand. All right, we're going to repeat this time three shots offhand and see if there's any difference. Hopefully there will be very, very little. Well, let's zoom in so you can see the proper gun fit, whether it's off the bag or off the shoulder, there should never be any appreciable difference in point of impact. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, still inch to two inches high as far as the center. So good news because the fab arm shoots where it's pointed or aimed and that's off of a bag and it goes the same place when I'm shooting offhand which means I don't have a gun fit issue which nobody wants. It fits me uh, beautifully. You can see uh, the clouds are dark. It looks like we're going to get some more rain so hopefully we can get this in before it's all done. Everybody wants to know how tough is it to clean one of these things because gas guns do need to be cleaned. It, it takes two to three minutes to clean an L4S. There's not much to it. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. All the goodies are right here beneath the forearm. You see the heavy chrome plating. This locks the barrel. Uh, firmly to the receiver. The barrel doesn't move. You get a lot of wiggly, rattly barrels. This doesn't happen. So, uh, as far as cleaning, there's not much to it. This is the pulse piston. It gets dirty right here. You clean it every time after you shoot it. All it takes is a little break free CLP. You can remove the barrel if you want. Actually, this is the gas cylinder. So break free, go through it until you're happy. You can see she's already clean. There's not much to it at all. You should be able to see that the gas cylinder here is already clean. It just takes a little wipe with break free. You don't get a hard crud or mung. So that takes just a second or two. Nothing to it. As far as the action itself, you do get crud right here at the end of the pulse piston. Very, very little on the inside, nothing to clean there, but the pulse piston is where you pick up the crud. So, uh, brake free. Takes care of most of it. You see it's coming right off. If you shoot for an extended period of time, you're probably going to want to use So, as far as easy to clean, there's nothing in the buttstock, no crud, so it really doesn't take much. General cleaning, just break free in a couple of patches and you're good to go. Uh, 
every several thousand rounds you want to strip it thoroughly and uh, and take care of the breech block, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there you go, everything's nice and snug, that's what I like about the gun. Flying around, we also don't have uh, a loose forearm. Everything is rock solid. Uh, it's really good. We're, we're getting rained on. I'm going to shoot a few more clays. Okay, I'm wet. Let's call it a day. <laughs>